Good morning, PJ here with you from IPL Radio, and I'm here this morning with Madeleine Tuwu. Did I pronounce that right? I hope so. You're pretty close, Tap you. Fantastic. And Madeleine is an author of two fantasy books. Could you give us a, a brief of what drove you to put pen to paper? So I think anyone that's a big book nerd, they always are like, oh, I'm going to write one day. I can do that. Uh, but the sort of defining moment for me was I watched someone quite close to me go through a very difficult situation um, where they woke up one day and someone that they had known their whole life and they thought was a good person and a good friend, they realised actually they weren't. So as I, I knew them only through that person. So it was quite interesting in a really heartbreaking and sad way to watch people navigate that new reality. So that sort of triggered the, the storyline of the assassin thief is what must it be like to wake up one day and realize the person you thought you knew your whole life, you, you don't actually know them at all. That's fantastic. No, because every, every story starts with a spark. Yes. Um, I'm a budding writer myself, but... Um, a long way to go yet, kind of thing. I, I um, put pen to paper and did a small novella, oh. just to you know scratch that itch, and then went, hmm, maybe I can do this. Yeah. Um, what was your kind of spark moment, other than you know the the story you've just told us? Was there a something that went, I have to get this down? I think. It was a bit of both. Like I definitely had the, the main character knocking about in my head for a while. Um, it was really important to me. I wanted to write a, a female main character that is truly morally grey because I feel like a lot of times, especially fantasy, we see male main characters that are morally grey and those same traits that are praised in men are demonised in women quite often. Um, so that was the sort of, that was the very, very beginning. And then, yeah, that situation is what have really pushed it into it sort of started to form a story then. I had the character and then I worked out where the character was going after that. And then I guess there was a bit of an even, as you're writing and you've got kind of your outline in the background kind of thing, as you're writing, the characters start evolving and the storyline starts evolving. Do you find you had to pull yourself back in a few instances to go, hang on a second, that's not really the direction I want to go, but let's explore something else? A little bit. So I'm a chronic pantser. So in the writing world, that means you write by the seat of your pants. I didn't sit down and plan out a story or anything. I just sat down and winged it. Uh, I actually wrote the very end scene of my first book first because that was what was in my head. And then I went back and went, now I have to get here. Uh, and I sort of just... The, the world expanded as my character moves through it. I sort of explain it like a video game a lot. You know, every time you unlock something new, the map gets bigger and bigger as you go. Yeah. Um, so my stories are very uh, character-driven plots. So I did have to go back in some instances and flesh out characters because they were too boring or too 2D uh, and not believable. So it, they sort of go hand in hand. I did jump back and forth quite a bit between building the world and then building the characters. That's fantastic. Every author has their own way of working. Um, and it's so, so great to see that there are, as you, as you term it, pantsers. Yes. <laughs> um, tend to be a bit that way myself. You know, once, once you start writing, yes. it's all, all automatic almost. Yeah, it and happens. it just happens. And then you go back and go, oh, that doesn't sound quite right. Let me just swap things around. Yeah. Um, so your books are out on sale now at the moment. Where can where can people find your books? Uh, pretty much everywhere. Luckily, um, they we have audio books, uh, e-books, and all the hard copies are in. If they're not in your local bookstore, they can order in for you. Um, they've actually just been put into Kmart and Big W and Target, which is really awesome. It makes it a lot more accessible to people in like smaller towns that don't have their own bookstore. Uh, so. Anywhere books are sold, I think that's the, the tagline for it. Fantastic. And are, is there anything else in the work at the moment? Yes. So I am in the dying hours of editing the third and final book of this trilogy, which will be out in October. And then that's that trilogy done. I've already got a kick up the butt from my publisher to get something new in the work. So I'm in the very early stages of trying to turn myself into a planner, which anyone that's a pantser knows that's so painful. Not easy. Um, no, but if I can get a proposal, because I've worked with this publishing company, um, I can actually get picked up on a proposal instead of 
having a full finished manuscript. So I'm trying very hard to be good and be a planner, uh, but it's that's super, super early days. I don't think it would be until like 2026 that you see anything about that. Well, you heard it here first, exclusive for IPL Radio. <laughs> um, we wish you absolutely every success with what you're doing and um, we'll be watching and following you as as the new books start coming out Say yes. thank you very much thank you very much for your time good afternoon i'm pj from ipl radio and i'm here today with uh, dylan from new dawn publishing okay dylan so tell me a bit more about new dawn publishing i hear it's a new publishing house publishing company yeah, so we're a new publishing company. We started in um, September 2021. Our first book came out in October 2022. And we specifically do fantasy and sci-fi publishing. So that's the only books we do. And we are a traditional publisher, so um, we cover all the fees of publishing. That's fantastic. Um, so what made you want to get into the publishing world? Um, so I worked in publishing previously for a number of small other publishing presses, but we found that um, we didn't really have anything in the market for fantasy and sci-fi in Australia. So we really, that's kind of like the books that I love. So we really wanted to kind of branch into that market. And um, yeah, we've just been going on it from then. So a bit of a void in the market when you came along and you went, this is exactly what we need to do. That's fantastic. Um, so how long have you guys been going for now? Um, it'd be three years now in September. Um, so our first book came out um, in October 2022. So that's nearly two years now. Um, so yeah, the, it hasn't been long and we've got about four titles out at the minute. With the way that everybody consumes online these days, um, how are you finding physical book sales? Is that still something that's you know really popular? It's actually very surprising. The physical book sales we make the majority of. We only make a small portion of um, ebook and even audiobook sales. And um, yeah, um, physical books definitely take the priority because you get them in the you get them in front of people. You get them in the bookstores. You get them at events like this. So yeah, they definitely have priority for us. So the authors that um, you promote through the publishing company, that kind of thing, available in all the kind of major outlets. Yeah, uh, most of them are available in Kmart, Target and Big W, um, depending on stocking and that, but you'll always find them in the general bookstores, so like Demix and QBD. And how do you go about finding authors to promote? Um, so we're open for submissions. We're, we're, we're closed at the minute. Um, we're opening next month again, but um, yeah, we have our submissions open. So authors will email us with their pitch, the book, and the first three chapters. If we like it, we'll ask for more. And then we'll, if we really like it, we'll give them an offer for a contract. We also get submissions from agents who have already got authors under their belt and they um, submit our books to us as well. Fantastic. And obviously the authors that you're promoting and supporting, they're starting to grow more in number? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so we got three authors and one illustrator at the minute. Um, we've already signed our list up until the end of 2025, so we have already know what books we're doing then. We'll be doing another um, five books in 2025. Um, so now we're even looking at authors in 2026. Wow, that's really exciting. Thank you ever so much for taking the time um, to speak to us today, and we wish you guys every success because no matter how digital we go, there's nothing better than holding yeah. that book, the smell of the paper, yeah. the feel of it. So, yeah, we wish you every success. Yeah, thank you very much. Well, this will be a first, right? PJ from Fire Up, Fire Up Your Morning, getting a tattoo for the very first time. To say I'm nervous is probably an understatement. To say that I'm probably going to be bawling like a baby <laughs> is what's going to happen. But no, I'll, I'll tough it out. If ladies can go through childbirth, I'm sure I can go through a tiny tattoo. <laughs> right? um, so I'm here with Drew. He's a first year apprentice, nearly finished your first year. Yes, yes, that's it. Thank you for having me. Um, yeah, I've been tattooing next week. It'll be a year. So yeah, it's been a crazy, crazy uh, journey. Fantastic. What, what made you decide to um, want to become a tattoo artist? Uh, it's probably not the most um, fairy tale story, but 
honestly, I never planned on it. It just really kind of happened. It kind of fell into my lap. Um, I've, art's always been a massive part of my life. Um, I've done art all through school, like pretty much ever since I was a baby. Um, and everyone always used to tell me to do something with art and I never, never took them seriously. Um, so after leaving high school and working in retail for a few years, I, um, I saw an ad pop up uh, for our, the shop that I'm at now um, saying they wanted an apprentice. And I was like, what the hell? Like, no harm in, in applying. And now I'm here, so I'm never looking back. That's an amazing story. I like, I like what you did there. You actually took something as a chance. Yeah. And now you're you're making a real go of it, which is phenomenal. What's your favourite kind of um, artistic style to draw? Definitely realism, uh, like anything realistically. That's um, that's what fascinates me the most. Um, that's what I've always uh, just practiced drawing when I was, you know, bored in my room or at school, bored in class, um, and even tattooing. Uh, realism's the kind of style that I stick with but um, I'm open to all styles I love all, all art styles fantastic and um, what is a tattoo art it is tattoo artist isn't it yeah um, what's the kind of process of going through being an apprentice it's very different shop to shop um, but mainly the gist of it is uh, you're looking at three to four years on average uh, for, a, for an apprenticeship. Um, usually when you start your apprenticeship, you're drawing, kind of proving yourself, showing your mentor, or your boss, uh, your artistic talents, um, just making sure, they're making sure that you're up to par and ready to tackle skin because obviously a tattoo is very permanent. So, you know, they, they want to make sure that you, you can, um, you're going to be adequate enough to permanently mark people's bodies um, so that's usually the first part of your apprenticeship and then uh, how like my apprenticeship's gone I started I went from drawing to tattooing on uh, fake skin which is like a silicon right like rubber um, we did pig skin for a little bit but that smells really bad so um, <laughs> we and you can't keep it we, you can't keep it so we had to turf that and yeah so I was doing a bunch of fake skins and then once my mentor was happy with uh, the level of progression that I'd gotten to, um, I started on real skin. I actually did my first tattoo on skin on, on my leg, um, this one here. So wow. that that was um, that was really fun, really scary because it hurt. <laughs> um, <laughs> and you're doing it on yourself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And as soon as I started, I was like, oh, damn it. I've got to finish it now, otherwise it's going to look silly. But um, yeah, then I was just tattooing family and friends. My best mate, he's gotten pretty much all of his tattoos from me. Um, and then I started charging like uh, after a little bit, and now I'm here. Fantastic. Well, I'm putting myself completely in your hands, that you have my complete trust. So we're going to get started and he'll switch the camera off when I start crying. <laughs> <Fine>. <laughs> Cheers.